they were or anything like that, and we've written poems around the words. These are not the most serious poems, at least for me, that you will ever hear. <coughs> so, um, for strong and wise, first off, I'm not really one for heels. I wear Converse on my feet, but dresses are okay, as long as comfort is the key. I'm dashing here and there with work to do and friends to meet. My children need my love and care, and yeah, they need to eat. It's a juggle between my left brain and right, and mental clarity and physical might. So there are worse things a woman could do than adopt attributes of two daughters of Zeus. Grey-eyed wise Athena had an owl before Harry Potter. An Artemis would disembowel a man if he dared to watch her whilst she bathed. Athena used her logic to soothe others roused in rage. An Artemis, strong huntress, was wild and couldn't be tamed. Athena carried a badass shield emblazoned with Medusa. An Artemis with short dress and arrows was unafraid to shoot ya. Their dad, king of the gods, couldn't keep it in his pants. Thus his daughters both knew better, and they didn't need a man. They did each love one mortal, though, Odysseus and Orion. Folks today would call them picky, though I can't fault them for trying. But the hunter died at his true love's hands, and the hero returned to his wife. So Athena and Artemis both decided to live the single life. I'm not quite as independent as these two goddesses of myth. I love my nerdy manly boyfriend, and it's with him that I live. Though he doesn't like to cross me, and I give the same respect. We have intense discussions, and neither of us expects that I should be less than strong and wise, because I am a woman, and I do my best by the precedent set by these Lady Olympians. I don't want to believe it's a little bit more serious, I don't know. My friend bought her necklace in a shop by the sea, a pewter pentagram on a fabric cord. She says she wears it for protection, and I can't argue because she believes. My friend likes hanging out with the Jesus Army. She's been baptized and reborn. Before she fell aimless, now she has a savior, and I can't argue because she believes. My friend sends healing to those in need, and speaks to spirits, reads tarot cards. She gives advice from the afterlife, and I can't argue because she believes. My friend prefers to trust what she sees and finds the answers in scientific laws. She doesn't need dogma or any god, and I can't argue when she disbelieves. As for me, I continue to seek. The truth is scattered, so what's the harm in leaving me to uncertainty? I'm constantly questioning what I believe. And my last one for In Charge is a sonnet. Yeah, yeah. mine, right? <laughs> right. My days are spent lounging in sunlight or curled up on a blanket watching rain. On windows, life is good, I can't complain. My sister and I have an easy life. The lady who lives with us needs advice. She prattles on but must know it's in vain to try and kick the answers from our brains even though our kind are always right. My sis and I awaken whilst they sleep. The lady and the man who share our house. To us it seems a good time for a chat but they grumble at us not to make a peep. To be, shock, horror, quiet as a mouse? Don't they realize it's time to feed the cats? I read off my phone, uh, so if someone rings me halfway through it, it'll give a really interesting feel to some of the poems. Um, the first one I wrote is um, for the word bubbly, um, uh, which yeah. I really like the word, but... I decided, like Kate, to try and write a sonnet, and then I got distracted while I was writing it, so it's not quite a sonnet because I missed a stanza out. And the whole point of the poem was about how you shouldn't judge people for being bubbly, they're not always that absent minded, so. <laughs> it's obvious you see me and think bimbo, not one thought in her pretty little head, like my intelligence must be in limbo. I'm superficial, vacuous, brain dead. Because I'm happy and enthusiastic, because I'm effervescing with delight, you think my personality is plastic. No one this blithe could possibly be bright. But all these surface bubbles hide a brain as elegant and complex as champagne. Uh, I 
really struggled with this for writing poems. I could have easily written a poem for every single word on the thing, but they would all have been really sarcastic. <laughs> I thought, maybe that's not quite what they're looking for, me going, no, it's all rubbish. It's, it's emotional stuff. But I did, I did let myself be sarcastic once, and this is a poem very much about me. It's called Decision. There's a fire underneath me, a bee in my bonnet, and a voice in my head says, why haven't you done it already? And now is the time, but somehow I'm not sure. Not today, I'll come back to it later. The window is closing, it's time for decision. I've energy, talent, resources and vision. And though it is time, an alarm seems to chime. It can wait, not too late, I'm a procrastinator. Then the moment is past, but I'm not feeling glum. I'm sure one more chance of a lifetime will come. So I'll keep holding steady and get myself ready. I know the next one will be even greater. Intuition. The poetry fans, it's a villain out. Woo! <laughs> For the poetry fan, it's a villain out. <laughs> Sometimes you just know. No logic, no reason. Relax, let it flow. You have to let go, though self doubt is teasing. Sometimes you just know. But when you feel low, self confidence freezing, relax, let it flow. This wisdom has no particular season. Sometimes you just know. It just goes to show it's something worth seizing. Sometimes you just know. Relax, let it flow. Okay, the first one I did is fancy. Dropping padded, tailor clad shoulders, letting her back curve as bare feet sit heavily on warm pile. Stop smiling and rub shrouded eyes, scattering cheeks with black pepper mascara, sharing too much with pale fingers. The phone rings, she answers what, says she's busy, but she's not. She'll dance through rooms to music she's ashamed to like, playing in her head while friends and colleagues go all the way downstairs and out through big double doors. I'm not, I'm not very happy with the next one, but it, it's quite short, so it's alright. <laughs> um, I'm passionate, so passionate, the, bear, the word can barely pass my lips without my tongue burning it. I like the moors, candles, storms, tearing hair and having fits. I've got so much, it makes me sick, like cafe, let my hair grow free, and everybody looks at me. I know that they all want to eat, but they're afraid. No one could tame such a wild and glorious beast, or moody goddess of the sea, because I'm fiery, feisty, tiring. Everyone admires it. Yes, I'm lying. Brackets, sighing. Some people don't have a heat of it. Okay, this one's independent. I want to cope to you in patchwork, layers of heat, too warm to burn, with knees bent sideways and a small mouse head, cradled to feed you milky tea, blue eyes open. Like an angel, you said. No, angels are red faced, ethereal and dead. You're a present. I'll decorate you with bows and let daisy chains embrace your head, chest, waist and toes. I can put a hand on your swaddled shoulder, let the fabric weight tighten and hold you. Sleeping, you pout, your lashes dust your cheeks like soot on pepper-freckled skin. One elfia peaks, hair spirals in. You want your hands, so when I leave for more white tea, you shuffle loose the coloured squares, escape the U-shape, reach for me.